Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Junto Presents. Join us at Franklin Manor, home to the Junto, a gentleman's club in the classic style where adventurers, mystics, and other unique individuals gather to socialize and conduct their private business. We offer you a glimpse at the strange and wonderful things to be found there. Hello and welcome to the latest mini-episode from Franklin Manor. My name is David Parkin. And I'm Robert Gibbs. Today we're coming to you from the announcer booth at Corner 4 of the famous Preston Tucker Raceway, built through the southern hills here on the Franklin Manor estate. A 2.8-mile, 10-turn tarmac track designed and built in 1947 by Junto member Preston Tucker, an automobile designer and entrepreneur most remembered for his 1948 Tucker sedan, also known as the Tucker 48 an automobile which introduced many features that have since become widely used in modern cars. Born in Michigan in 1903, Tucker spent his life under the hood of race cars. He began designing and building engines for the war effort in 1941, and after World War II, he started his own car company. Tucker was a loyal and respected member of the Junto for most of his life. However, during his visits to Franklin Manor after the war, he began noticing that the influx of young members returning from the war seemed dissatisfied with the stuffy and old-fashioned air that had grown in the club. In 1947, Tucker and fellow Junto member, racing veteran Harold Miller, drew up plans for a racetrack and petitioned the club board of directors for what Miller would refer to as the longest shot in the history of long shots. (laughs) At the time, the Junto was famous for its pomp and haughtiness, a direct contrast in the ideals put forth by Ben Franklin, but... Like most clubs and political parties, ideals change. In the late 1940s, the board was comprised of nothing but stuffed shirts and pageantry. Of course, the request was promptly denied. In a letter from club president Carlton Ezra, he wrote, Dear Misters Tucker and Miller, the Junto is no place for the smell or sound of racing cars and cheering reprobates, both of which offend the ears and nostrils in equal measure. If grease, exhaust, and the low morals that breed in such mire is what you are looking for, in your gentleman's club, I suggest you report to your nearest roadhouse and join the local group of motorcycle enthusiasts. And there the decision stood. For seven months. Carlton Ezra died early the next year, and, fearing another generation of imperiousness, a young group of swingers, that's the definition of the word from 1948, mind you, drew influence from the other Junto members and voted their candidate into the vacant president's seat. That candidate was Anna Roosevelt Halstead, daughter of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt and famous defender of women's rights. Immediately, the new club president began working to turn the tone and perspective of the Junto back to the ideals of its founder. Ben Franklin cherished his youth, Halstead said in her speech at the ribbon-cutting ceremony of Tucker's track. He loved music, he loved invention, and I believe had they existed in his time, he would have loved race cars, too. That was 70 years ago today, and to celebrate the wonderful legacy of Preston Tucker and his raceway, we hold an annual car show, parade, and race along the track, which I'm sure you can hear behind us. Each year we shut down the Franklin Manor airstrip located just south of the starting line to display some of the various modes of transportation featured in the club's museum. There are autos from the birth of the industry, like the 1901 Oldsmobile Curved Dash Runabout, first-class terraplanes like the 1929 Duesenberg Model J, and, of course, classic muscle cars like the 1970 Plymouth Hemi Superbird and my favorite, the 1949 Mercury two-door coupe. Of course, cars aren't the only thing on display here. We have a refurbished fire trolley designed by Ben Franklin himself for the Union Fire Company, the first fire department in the world, organized and run by Franklin himself. And, of course, we have the Wraith. The Wraith, you say? Yes, I do say. The (laughs) Wraith was an armored carriage built, owned, and operated by the Stoker clan, kinfolk of the notorious Finnegan Stoker, of whom we have spoken before. 
fitted with a halo of iron spikes, portholes for firing weapons, escape hatches, and even a rudimentary electrified security system, the Wraith is said to be the first vehicle designed for high-speed urban warfare. Not a particularly strange idea, but for the time and location in which it was used. The Wraith was operated by the Stokers in London between 1716 and the late 1730s, which was a time of peace in London. Which begs the question, if there were no wars to be fought, what were the Stokers doing with a war machine, Rob? Well, if you ask them, there was indeed a war going on in London. A conflict the Stokers would describe as the longest-running war in history. A war between good and evil. A war that pit father against son, neighbor against neighbor. A war that we... We'll talk about in a different episode. <laughs> Rob, you had me on the edge of my seat. Well, that's where you should be. We're at the races. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for our listener question. My favorite part. Sent in by Tracy Barris from Hinsdale, New Hampshire. Not too far from us. As the crow flies, sure. What are you doing in New Hampshire, Tracy? We got funnel cake over here. <laughs> the letter reads, Dear Dave and Rob, I am so happy to have found your podcast. Thank you for such a great show. I take full credit. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> My question is, you mentioned that the Junto is one of the oldest social clubs in the country. Are there others that have been around as long? Interesting question, Tracy. Of uh, the clubs that come to mind, there's the South River Club in Maryland, organized in 1690, and the Old Colony Club in Plymouth, Massachusetts, organized in 1769. Then there's the infamous organization that took form around the same time and place as the Junto. Many don't know this, but when the Junta was founded in 1727, another club was quickly formed to offset the growing popularity of Franklin's organization. When Thomas Penn, noted rival of Franklin and the Junta, was refused entry into the American branch of the Hellfire Club, an infamous European institution of scallywags, he created a club of his own, which he named the Brimstone Circle. The Brimstones were organized on principles of greed and violence. Their philosophy was, use one to feed the other until you get what you want. An unwelcome credo, to be sure, but a popular one nonetheless. In a few short years, Penn's club had spread throughout all of New England. Favored by wealthy slave traders, the club became a haven for those who made their living off the suffering of others, a true home away from home for Thomas Penn. Unfortunately for old Tom, however, he would only enjoy his status as president for a few years before he found himself an unwelcome pariah in his own club. Now, Penn was not what you would call a born leader. And with the growing membership, he soon found himself embroiled in scandal and overseeing an association who were unhappy with his spineless form of leadership. Soon, an insurgent stripped Penn of his title and forced him out of the club. Aside from a few rumors and conspiracy theories, the outside world doesn't know much more than that about the Brimstone Circle. There are writings about them in the Manor Archives, but for your safety and ours, we can't share that information at this time. We can say that the club does continue to operate to this day, and to them... Secrecy is of the utmost importance. That sounds ominous, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, before we go, we would like to share with you a little bit more about our upcoming second season. We've already mentioned that season two will consist of one serialized story, and tonight we'd love to announce the title of that story. The title of season two of The Junto Presents is The Kingdom of Dr. Moreau. Ooh, sounds intriguing. Oh, Rob, you have no idea. Well, I do have a bit of an idea. <laughs> right. Well, you listeners who aren't producing the episodes, you are in for something special. Until then, please continue sharing Season 1 with your friends. Send any questions you may have to Hobson, our spectral head of communication, at deadletteratthejuntopresents.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Take care. The house is haunted by the echo of your last goodbye. The house is haunted by memories that refuse to die. The Junto Presents is brought to you by Dreams in the Witch House, a Lovecraftian rock opera available at witchhouserocks.com. Tonight's miniature program was written and produced by Mr. David Parkin and Mr. Robert J. Gibbs. It was edited by Mr. Timothy Thompson. I am your announcer, James K. Riley, reminding you that the Junto are dedicated to mutual improvement in the lives and business they embody. Who are the Junto? Perhaps, dear listener, the Junto 
is you.